But my topic and my impression of the results of this survey and my outlook on the future of PR is simply that PR needs more balls. And I mean that in the nicest possible way. Uh, and, 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 I, and I translate balls to mean uh, courage, really. And, and that's sort of my, my thrust at USC, and it's a little bit what we found out in this survey. So I s thought I'd share with you some of the results really quickly, because I only have 20 minutes. Right now, the PR industry is about $14.4 billion uh, revenue worldwide. And we asked people what they thought this would look like in 2020. And it's very optimistic. They thought it would be as, as much as 19.3. So that was good news. But when you compare that to advertising, advertising is about 550 billion. So we're still very small compared to advertising. When we asked, we, and we surveyed both agency and corporate people, and we compared the results. And uh, agency people were a little more optimistic. They thought over five years the industry would grow, they would grow about 33%, increasing their headcount about 26%. In-house, a little more modest, about 13%, with headcount going up over five years, about 11%. We asked people where this growth would come from, primarily from content creation, social media, and reputation management. And probably these are not a big surprise to anybody in this room. These are what you hear over and over. Um, and, and, and so the question is, what do we have to do to realize this growth, to take advantage of this big opportunity we have now as an industry, and it breaks down into six different balls. The first is embrace change. And we ask people um, whether the words public relations will describe what we do in five years. And only 27% of people believe that the term PR would describe what we do. So that's sort of an interesting topic in and of itself. And then we also ask how many people thought over the next five years you would be changing the structure of your organization in order to adapt to the changes in public relations. And everybody anticipated change. Almost 100% of people thought they would need to change the way they operate in order to adapt to the changes in the industry. But when we asked them how much, the answer was a little different. Oh, this is the re sorry, these are the reasons for the change. Again, it's new technologies, increasing demand for content, and new channels. So those were the reasons people thought they'd need to change their structures. But when we asked them how much they need to change them, the answer was slight to moderate. And this was kind of surprising. If you think about all the different things that are happening in our world, and we're asking agency heads and corporate heads how much they anticipate changing in five years, it wasn't very much. So that, I thought, was slightly worrisome, but uh, something that I think we're all dealing with in our own ways. Um, the second thing, hire differently. The biggest challenge to reaching goals in agencies and inside in-house teams, everybody knows the answer. What is it? Talent. This talent. Retaining the right talent, number one. Recruiting the right talent. Lack of relevant talent. And the availability of competent management were the four things that people ranked the highest in terms of the challenges that they're facing from a talent perspective. When we asked PR firm leaders where they hired from, guess what they said? Other PR firms. We asked in-house corporate teams where they hired from, guess what they said? Other in-house corporate teams, and then PR firms. So everybody agreed that we're not good at hiring people from outside of our industry. That was sort of universal. And when we asked them why, one of the reasons was the pay scale that it's, it's a challenge to get people to move into public relations because the salaries are not always comparable as they are in other professions, particularly at entry level. We asked them what skills would be the most important in five years. And this is a little surprising to me, and maybe not to you, but writing was number one. And people have interpreted this differently. A lot of people say, God, that's great to hear because it's so important to be good writers. And we all know that. We, we, we know they have to be a good writer to be successful in this. But really, in five years from now, this is still the number one thing we're going to be looking for in people joining our industry. I thought that was a little surprising and maybe not forward thinking enough. Strategic planning and verbal communications was right up there with. So written communications and verbal communications ranked way above all the other things that people are talking a lot about these days. But we asked what traits people were looking for, not what skills and what traits. 
And these were the things that popped up the most. Critical thinking, intellectual curiosity, and creativity. And blue is the agency leaders, and yellow is in-house. So very similar across the board in terms of what kind of talent people think we will need over the next five years. The third is we ca I call own the sandbox. And as PR people, we always are known for swimming in their swim lanes and playing nice in the sandbox. But I think that dynamic is changing quite a bit because, as all of you know, we're competing with a lot of different disciplines now. And I think this is the opportunity for us um, to not be so quite so nice in the sandbox. We ask uh, corporate leaders what kind of relationships they had with their agencies. And the agency of record is, is around 20% now. So that dynamic seems to be changing. Mo many uh, corporate teams work with multiple agencies or just hand out assignments on an ad hoc basis. But when we ask agencies who they reported to, this was kind of surprising. Only one-third of the agencies said their clients are corporate communications departments. Two -thir another third are marketing and brand management, and then about a third is the CEO or the president. So this is a different dynamic. We also felt that people are starting to find new clients with inside organizations. And when we ask uh, agents, uh, the corporate communications teams what they thought their agency budgets would look like over the next five years, most of them said they're going to be about the same. Not a lot, a little bit more, a little bit less, but ma mainly the same, that they're going to be spending about the same with agencies as they always have. But when we ask agency leaders what percentage of the, their clients' budget they thought they would have over the course of the next five years, what would happen to it, they thought it would grow by about 22%. So what does that mean? It means they're getting it from other places besides the corporate communications department. And usually it's marketing and brand management. And that requires different skill sets, different kinds of people, and, and a di whole different dynamic. So that's, a, I think, a, a major change in where we're sort of headed. Um, the, the fourth one is get paid. And I don't mean this in the literal sense. We asked people what media channels they were investing in and which ones they thought were going to be the most valuable to them in-house and in agencies over the next five years. And not surprisingly, uh, earned is still 40% of the revenue and 40% of the expense on the corporate side there, uh, of the investment. Um, but over five years, that drops to less than a third. And you see that distributed over these other three areas. So this is, uh, I thought, was an interesting statistic. And it shows that the publicity factor of what we do is still important, the media relations. But it's going to become increasingly less important over time. And, and, the, uh, and what we have to think about is we're competing with other types of uh, disciplines, marketing disciplines, who are moving into the pay, and we're moving into the paid space. That's a pace, a place that they understand better than we do. And our secret sauce has always been media relations. And if that's not going to be as important to us in the future, then that has dynamic implications for the kinds of people we hire and the kind of skills we have. So I think understanding paid is going to be critical. We ask people how many outlets would have paid content sitting next to earned content in the next five years. And this was a little surprising to me. They said about two-thirds. Most of the research that I've seen says almost 100% of media now have some sort of branded content or paid, paid placement or integrated content you pay for. So I think that the paid is going to be a huge opportunity for us if we're ready to, to uh, ta tackle it. Uh, invest in ideas. When we ask uh, why, why um, corporate teams hire agencies, it was interesting that arms and legs was the third thing. I was sort of happy about that. It's still on the chart, but it's not the top reason they're hiring them. The top reason is for st strategic insight and creativity. So that's what clients are saying they want from agencies, and that's also what they want from their, for their people. So that's, I think, good news for all of us. It makes our business more challenging and more interesting. But from an agency perspective, it's a little challenge because these are things that we're not used to selling. 